Hello everybody, my name is Aqueous and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be discussing some massive news affecting a lot of larger content creators in the gotcha space. I know I'm not one of the larger creators, but as someone who's trying to get my foot in the door, I should share my thoughts and feelings about major developments that happen within the community. While Shinya was the first CC to break the news to the community, prompting a response from Tectone and Gotcha Smack, who both talked about the repercussions and backed up his statement. Today I'll be reacting to the source and giving my opinions and explanations. Alright, let's get into the react. Greetings, Rovers. Taking a break from our regularly scheduled programming of posting a video a day in May for Weathering Waves release, today I received a screenshot on my Twitter from an unknown account. If this is true and undoctored information, this drama absolutely surpasses nuclear. We're talking full-blown, giga-thermo-catastrophic yeah. nuclear drama. Absolutely. I'm actually kind of nervous writing the script and turning it into a video because I have a feeling we are about to open up an entire can of worms, and this is going to lead us down a rabbit hole, and I'm going to end up blacklisted. Hell yeah. So before I drop off the algorithm and I'm absolutely blacklisted from every company, I'd really appreciate it if you guys drop me a like and follow me on my Twitch, as I'll be doing a 24-hour stream on May 22nd for the Weathering Waves release. Hell yeah, absolutely. I think y'all should go follow, uh, go subscribe, and like Lal Shinya's content. Um, it is very, very good. This guy is pumping out videos, by the way. Let me just, let me just bring this guy up real quick. Let me just bring this guy up. This guy is smurfing. This guy is already at 12 videos, 8.1k subs. If I was at 8k subs within 12 videos, my pants would be thoroughly shit. So, uh, thank you all for, you know, watching my reaction to this guy, but I think you should, guys should also check him out just to, you know, give him at least a view and a subscriber. All right. This guy is, is very good. Today at around midnight, I received a Twitter notification from an account called Leaker. By the way, I will also be streaming all day on Weathering Waves release day. I, I already got the day off of work. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to get right to it. And I'm going to be streaming pretty much all day. Lamau 29,000, who shared this image on my Twitter thread discussing the recent Robin drama. It looks to be a snippet of a contract from a company called Yomi Holic. Doing some research into this company, it seems like they are go a over more. party advertising agency working with over 400 plus companies. They offer collaboration marketing, offline advertising, and mm -hmm. influencer marketing. While I can't say for sure if this is legitimate or not, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that this is a legitimate snippet of the contract that was offered to them. So Yomi Holic, he, he doesn't know in this video, but he actually confirms that this was in fact... Um, this was, in fact, uh, they are direct partners. Uh, and Yomi Holic is a direct partner of Hoyaverse. Um, but yeah, it, it's all true. And then also he said, a few hours ago, a random Twitter account linked an image of one of my previous posts with a screenshot of a snippet of the contract. I am attempting to verify, verify the legitimacy of the screenshot, and I have spoken to others and individuals. The screenshot is 100% legit. So, yeah, that is really important this is big news uh this is you know this is completely legit like Tectone talked about this and he confirmed that this is 100 percent true he has heard uh many times that uh, from many other larger creators that mostly do hoyoverse games and even just gotcha games in general that this is a thing that hoyoverse is trying to hand out to people um it's very very dangerous it's very dangerous and Lal Shinya is about to explain why in this video. The contract states, The creator shall promptly notify Yomi Holic if any other gaming brand intends to sponsor their content. Yomi Holic has full discretion to reject sponsorships that could be detrimental to Zenless Zone Zero or the content creator's reputation. Mm -hmm. The extract cooperation content will be as follows. The content creator commits to engaging in minor promotional activities such as retweeting Zenless Zone Zero's posts, sharing in-game screenshots, and so on, for each Zenless Zone Zero update and important festival. Occasionally, the content creator may be requested to participate in major influencer campaigns by creating theme-specific videos, collaborating on creative projects, attending online events, etc. Now, here's a very interesting part. Hoyoverse may use the content creator's videos for marketing purposes. I believe this is the first smoking gun in this discussion, as Hoyoverse is directly named in this contract. Being named in the contract means they're- I don't think that what they're asking of people, um, is bad here in this line with the ABC. The big problem is 
this E up here at the very, very top. The content creator shall promptly notify Yomiholic if any other gaming brand intends to sponsor their content. So they must tell, uh, they basically must tell Hoyoverse whether or not they're going to get sponsored by somebody. And Yomiholic, or, you know, Hoyoverse, has full discretion to reject sponsorships that could be detrimental to Zenless Zone Zero or the content creator's reputation. What exactly would be considered detrimental to Zenless Zone Zero? Um, I think any kind of game within the genre, even out of the genre, that competes directly with Zenless Zone Zero. That, that could possibly, possibly have players switch from, you know, Zenless Zone Zero to that game. And even more than that, this is other brands that partner with other people that partner with other uh, businesses that partner with other people, such as like peripherals uh, and like he brings it up here uh, in this video later. We'll talk about uh, gamer subs. If gamer subs participates in, you know, collabing with a content creator that Hoyoverse doesn't like, but then also tries to collaborate with that, you know, the content creator that assigned this agreement, they can be like, Oh, that's, that's damaging to your reputation reputation you don't want to be associated with a brand associated with you know baldemort they are somehow directly involved in either writing or approving this contract the following documents shall be deemed to form and be read and construed as part of this agreement for the purposes of interpretation the priority of the documents shall be in accordance with the following sequence the zenless zone zero content creator cooperation agreement and its amendments if any the appendix appendix and any other documents forming part of the agreement now, those of you with keen eyes can tell already that there are some minor spelling mistakes and grammatical errors within this document, but I have a feeling this may be just a result of either poor translation or someone who received the uh, leak of this translated that themselves and there may be some oddities. Hoyoverse has a uh, reputation to translate poorly uh, from, uh, from globalization, so it's not completely uh, out of the park, you know, and besides... Tectone has already, you know, confirmed there. confirmed that people have received this contract directly from Hoyoverse and, um, you know, the ad agency. So, yeah, that's, uh, it's rough. It's rough. It's hard to say for certain. So, like, at, yeah, at this point he's saying it's hard to say for sure, but we know for sure now. It has been confirmed. This is real. Sections A, B, and C in the latter portion of this document seem to be pretty boilerplate. The content creator agrees to promote the game, participate in marketing campaigns, creating videos, etc. All standard things you would expect from a contract. Exactly. All right, yep. so now we're going to start talking about the juicy bits of the contract. Section E. Yes, right, sir. So let it be known, and I just want to make this very, very, very clear. I am in no way a lawyer. I have never been a lawyer, and I have never studied law. But as someone who has worked with contracts for my real-life work experience and worked with content creation before with contracts, I will attempt to offer my interpretation. Section E of the contract is outright requiring the creator who received this contract to promptly notify Yomi Holic if any other gaming brand intends to sponsor their content. This statement has two major implications behind it. All right, so firstly, any gaming, which can be extremely loosely interpreted, most companies have some sort of tie to the gaming industry nowadays. Is Razer a gaming company? What about Logitech? Hell, even what about gamer subs? A good lawyer could argue in court that these are gaming companies. They offer a sponsorship to the creator and they need to be reported. So does this mean yep. that any creator needs to report if they intend to or have already signed a contract? Or are they requiring any offer of sponsorship to be reported? To me, it sounds like the latter, which I think is absolutely- It's very, very dangerous. Absolutely insane. How in the world can a company worth their marbles suggest that a simple offer of a sponsorship need to be reported to them? Even if we went with the former interpretation, the next line clearly states that Yomi Holic outright has full discretion to reject sponsorships that could be detrimental to Zenless Zone Zero. The key word to this insane statement is detrimental. The verbiage used here is vague on purpose as it opens up the definition of what, be, what could be considered breach of contract. Exactly. If you leave it vague, that leaves the company wiggle room to just get you on different things. And what I've been told is that uh, being sued by Hoyoverse is being sued or, or breaking a contract with Hoyoverse can cost people a half a million dollars. That is that that could be more money than anyone has ever made in content creation. Um, that, that could just completely wipe away your entire career instantly and your entire life. Your well-being it is contracts are very very dangerous and that why that that's why if you know hopefully when i ever get big enough to maybe get offered a contract for any game or anything or any product or whatever i'm going to be reading over that very extensively and i'm going to be making sure that 
you know, I get a fair deal and I am not contract jailed in any way. I I will definitely have somebody look over it for sure, too. In which Yomi Holic could go after the content creator for breach of contract, generally resulting in monetary damages. I've heard through the grapevine that large companies such as MiHoYo have clauses in their contract that content creators who breach contracts can receive fines of upwards of $500,000. This is oh, just yeah, conjecture, just and I obviously okay. have no proof to back it up. Take it with a grain of salt, but honestly, I would not be surprised in the slightest. Yep. The verbiage detrimental could be argued that the creator simply working with another game company, or even a company that is loosely related to gaming, could be applied. Exactly. One could even argue that providing sponsored content from a game even outside of Zenless Zone Zero's genre could take the spotlight off of just Zenless Zone Zero. True. This would be considered a breach of contract. All right, so let's... True, especially because, right? And this is not even that, like, oh, if you make a con, if you make a piece of content for WoW, you're gonna steal all of our Zenless Zone Zero players, and they're gonna go play World of Warcraft. No, it's actually more like the company could make that thing, make that decision based off of like, hey, I mean, like he made a wow video, but like, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, he could have made another Zenless Zone Zero video, right, guys? Right, guys? Like that would have been better for us if he made a Zenless Zone Zero video. And that's pretty detrimental to us if he's spending his time making videos about World of Warcraft rather than Zenless Zone Zero. I mean, that's pretty detrimental to us in a way where, you know, that could lose us some players because, hey, maybe that video that he would have made instead of the WoW video would have got a few eyes on our game that wouldn't have been there before and, you know, would have gave us a little bit of a very small boost in player numbers and then maybe they could have wailed out. and maybe Hey, I mean, we're honestly, we're, we could be losing a lot of money. This guy made a WoW video, you know? This is crazy. It, it, very dangerous. I mean, like, exactly what he said earlier, like, the, the vague... Um, just the, simply the word detrimental and no other further explanation or details is, is very dangerous because Hoyoverse could spin it however they would like. And as long as it's modernly in the realm of reality, a lawyer, one of their lawyers who I'm sure they could pay very, very well for a very, very good lawyer. They are a massive company. Um, I'm sure that, you know, they could argue that in a court and people would agree with them. Let's think about this critically for a second. Zenless Zone Zero has a rumored release date of July 3rd. What if a creator has a sponsor or wants to take a sponsor from Square Enix for the release of Final Fantasy XIV's expansion Dawn Trail, which comes out on July 2nd? This creator doing the sponsor could take yeah. a spotlight over ZZZ and could be potentially stealing someone away from their game, which would 100% fall as detrimental. True. Detrimental could even be argued if the creator accepts a sponsorship from Logitech, who regularly sponsors esports events for games like Dota, Valorant, and Counter-Strike. Would this contract prevent the creator from working with a peripheral company just because their logo is on other games? I could see this being considered a breach of contract. Honestly, that seems pretty what possible. Gamer subs? They're partnered with someone that MiHoYo outright hates and has blacklisted. The Baldermort Tectone. Yes, sir. I love that picture, by the way. I love that. You know, hey, my penis, uh, you know, my penis has seen that picture so many times. You know what I'm saying, guys? Would a creator lose out on the sponsor because they're directly mm -hmm. affiliated with someone that regularly critiques their company? I mean, hell, even me posting this video is going to kill potential collaborations with creators that take contracts like this. And even me reacting to it? As a very, very small creator, you know, a, a big Hoyoverse contract, not that they're ever that big, but big, big for me, for sure. Um, thousands of dollars would do me quite wonders. That would be life changing amounts of money. And honestly, I would just rather stay true to myself, stay true to, you know, the, the things that I said and the values that I have and I'll make it when I make it, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dick ride or beat around the bush or fence it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my my piece and you know when i make it at least i'll know that i you know stay true to myself there's obviously <clears throat> hundreds if not even thousands of other implications surrounding this line in the contract all right so let's play besides i would i would kill for a um lilith games the people of uh the, the people that make afk journey or a uh kuro games the people that are making weathering waves i would kill for one of those <clears throat> uh, a sponsorship for that uh, for either of those, definitely over a Hoyoverse co contract. Devil's advocate for a second, and say those hypothetical situations wouldn't happen. Depending on the length of the contract, you could be stuck and miss career-changing opportunities from other companies if Yomi Holic decided to deny them. Absolutely. The amount of power they would have over this creator is astronomical, and could flat out be a career-ending move for anyone roped into this. And the thing is, the reason why people are probably getting this now is because they want to get this contract in effect with content creators before Weathering Waves comes out. 
That way, when Weathering Waves comes out and tries to sponsor these people, they're not allowed to take it, right? I'm sure Weathering Waves already has a long list of people who they're sponsoring lined up already. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they did that months or so in advance, at least, at least before now. But, you know, there, there could be some last minute contracts. Kuro Games wants to maybe ship out to some creators they might have missed. And, you know, if people are signing the Zenless Zone Zero contract with Hoyoverse, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's going to be very, very scary. They, they could miss out on completely career-altering opportunities. They might get stuck being a one-trick pony for a game they don't even like. They might miss out on a lot more money from Weathering Waves or something. They might end up loving Weathering Waves and then want to be, would rather be sponsored by Kuro Games, but they had to deny Kuro. Uh, because, you know, of this Zenless Zone Zero contract. While I tend to give the benefit of a doubt for things, we're talking about an ad agency and their mm -hmm. parent company, MiHoYo, who is absolutely ruthless. They will protect their brand no matter what. Yep. I mean, hell, if the show Mad Men taught us anything about ad agencies, it's that ad agencies are the absolute devil and are not to be trusted. While I understand wanting to protect brand integrity and a Never seen that show. Never seen creators, that movie. There's a balance between protecting your brand and just fostering collaboration with the creators that you're working with. I might watch it, though. I think I like that actor that it, that came up. All right, so I know I've name dropped. I've seen him before. He's pretty good. Me Hoyo a few times during this conversation, despite the ad agency being a different entity. But for the slow ones, companies approaching ad agencies generally will set the terms and conditions of the contracts that are offered and has the final say on how the contracts are, are read. The ad agency is simply the one in charge of the paperwork, record keeping, and communication with the content creator. MiHoYo would have, would have had to either directly <clears throat> sign off on the contract or flat out told them this clause needs to be in it. All right, so how True. is MiHoYo scared? From someone who has worked in the business, this contract stipulation is not normal. Companies will generally not restri restrict the creators from covering other games or companies. The only usual stipulation is that you need to show the game in a positive light. And by the game, I mean the game that you are doing the sponsorship for, not other sponsors. And why specifically for ZZZ? The overall reception of ZZZ has been absolutely abysmal since the last beta test, and the hype surrounding the game seems to have vanished. MiHoYo's direct competitor, Kuro Games, is releasing Wuthering Waves this month on May 22nd. I truly believe that this is MiHoYo's attempt on nabbing up as many content creators in the space and refusing them the ability to talk about their competitor's game because they legitimately fear that Wuthering Waves is going to be a massive success and has the long-term potential to overshadow their games. Alright, so let me put my 10 And I 100% agree with that, by the way. I think, maybe not in the short term, well, maybe in the short term, the super short term, Weathering Waves will probably outshine both, uh, like all the Hoyoverse games, right? And then after a little bit of time comes out, you know, the players who were there just for the hype at the very, very, very beginning, they're going to drop off a little bit. But then over time, you know, once Weathering Waves builds up their consistent player base and that slowly grows over time and maybe Genshin Impact, if they don't get their head out of their ass, if, uh, if those players slowly start leaving, joining Weathering Waves, Weathering Waves slowly keeps growing. Uh, I believe, you know, really, really short term, Weathering Waves will be huge, right? Mid term, it'll probably be Hoyo vs. Games on top again. And then long term, I think it's up for grabs. 100% it's up for grabs between them, right? And obviously, Honkai Star Rail is incredible. I'm mostly talking about Weathering Waves probably outshining Genshin Impact. I think as long as Honkai Star Rail stays on the path that it's on, there is, it is going to be very, very, very difficult for Weathering Waves to take that light away because Honkai Star Rail, unlike Genshin Impact, is always massively improving. Every patch. Well, head on real quick. I legitimately believe MiHoYo sees Kuro Games and Weathering Waves as a massive blow to their grip on the gacha game community. I agree. If Kuro was able to knock it out of the park with the release of their game and keeps in communication with the community and listens to our feedback, this could outright steal a significant portion of Genshin and Star Rail's community for who the hell knows how long. This yep. could be MiHoYo's last ditch effort to stem the bleeding before it turns into a full blown wound. Exactly, exactly. That's why they're trying to get it out now. They're trying to get it out early, try and deny as many uh, Kuro Games contracts as possible, get them, get content creators hard locked into Weathering Waves. And I think that is very, very sad because. What, uh, the game comes out in June, so May 22nd, uh, Weathering Waves comes out, and it's going to be extremely, extremely popular. Uh, June or July, Weathering Waves comes out. Um, but for whatever time between Weathering Waves releasing and even like up, up until release, people are talking about it, I'm talking about it, I'm making videos on it, Lol Shinya is making videos on it, Tectone, all the really good gacha creators are making videos about Weathering Waves. All the really good gacha creators 
want Wuthering Waves to succeed greatly. Um, and uh, they're going to miss, basically, they're going to basically miss out on all that hype, all that revenue they could be make, making with, like, release day videos and things like that and, and upcoming content, you know, descriptions and guides and things like that. I mean, they're, they're missing out. At the end and that's exactly the intention. That is the exact intention of this. That is why it's coming out now. Today, the simple fact that a company would be allowed to tell you who you can and can't work with and deny any potential sponsorships offered to you almost sounds borderline illegal. It's scary. Obviously, it is. Obviously, we're dealing with a company that's overseas, but this comes on the heels of the FTC announcing a rule on banning non-compete clauses back in April. I'm unsure if something like this applies to contracts, especially for a marketing company that's out of the country, but I figured I'd bring it up. You know, it might not because of contracts. Because you sign a contract. If, the con if you sign... Like, you could have just not signed that contract. If you sign it and it says that you, you know, no compete, that, you know, that probably takes effect. But I don't know if it's going to protect them. And even if it did, even if people were like, ha, ho, you verse, there's a non-compete clause here in the United States of America. So as for the American content creators, you cannot force us. You cannot force this part of the contract on us. Ha ha. Oh, you know what? They're just not going to give you a contract next time. They're just not going to, they're not, they're not going to support you next time. You will be blacklisted because, you know, oh, oh, the, the law of the United States protects you here. Okay. We just, we, we just won't talk to you anymore. You know, we just won't support you anywhere. We won't sponsor you anymore. You're good. Is there a rule saying we can't blacklist you? Oh, no. Okay. Well, it seems like we hold the power here. So we're not, we're, we're just going to do that. And that is why. Right? People should do what Lal Shinya do. People should do what Tectone do, what Gotcha Smack does, what MTash does. And they should 100% from minute one, as soon as you can in content creation, get the ball in your hands and keep it there. You are the decider. A company comes to you with a contract, you decide if it's best for you. If it's not what's best for you, long term, do not sign it. The ball is in your hands. Take control. Of your life, take control of your content. And this is like the same kind of things that Tectone was saying, except like I'm, I'm like paraphrasing here. This is absolutely despicable behavior and makes me lose any positive will I've had towards MiHoYo. All right, so what do you guys think? Do you think this is a hoax? Do you think it's all fake? Do you think I'm full of shit? Let me know down in the comments below. And please consider liking and subscribing before MiHoYo sends assassins to take me out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, maybe. <laughs> what do you guys to know? I'm going to say something the Tectone said in his, in his response. I will not kill myself. Okay? If I'm dead, someone else did it. Yeah? So, I just want you guys to know that. Yeah, anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. Gotcha Smack has actually made two videos on this now. Um, Tectone has made one, I believe. Let's refresh. Okay, yeah, still one. I showed you guys at the beginning of the video, but yeah, Tectone, uh, Gotcha Smack has two. Um, I haven't checked to see if anybody else has talked about it. Maybe Mtash has, but Mtash has been on a bit of a break, so I don't think that he has done it yet. Um, I don't think that he's covered this, but he probably would because he has talked about this before and he's already blacklisted by Hoyoverse, so what's the, what, what could it hurt? But thank you all for watching. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Go to Lal Shinya's uh, YouTube channel. Make sure we give him a subscribe and a few likes on his videos. Just go through his videos. If you like them, like them. They're really, really good. This is the second time I have reacted to Lal Shinya. His videos are very, very good. Okay, his videos are very, very good. I just put him on 1.5 speed because he does talk a little slower and I didn't want this video to go on forever. So, uh, yeah, I believe that's everything I, I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, I pretty much said in the pauses, uh, this is a very dangerous thing. And, you know, we as a community need to stand up against these kind of things. You get a contract like this if you're an upcoming content creator or if you're if you are trying to grow and that's I'm talking to myself guys I'm talking to myself here don't take it very dangerous but okay I could blow up on a video tomorrow maybe it's possible I could I could blow up on a video tomorrow and Hoyo versus like oh my god that, that, that content creator is like is new and upcoming let's snatch him up right away they give me a contract like that if I sign it and then 
Kuro Games also sees that I started blowing up and I was already posting and talking really good about their game and they want to sponsor me and then I have to turn them down. Oh, I would be ruined. I would be ruined. So don't ruin yourself. And I hope other creators don't ruin themselves either. I hope, uh, I hope people think twice about signing contracts like this. I really do. I hope they think actually zero times because it, it needs to go right in the trash. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. I'm going to be streaming Weathering Waves all day on the 26th of May when it comes out. Okay, all day.